Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. So, we are continuing our reading of this radical feminist book. And in order for us to truly understand their philosophy, we must go through it word by word so that we can have solutions and proper responses to what they actually believe versus what we think they believe. Because if you're not accurate, well, then how can you aim correctly? This has been quite a journey thus far in this text, so I hope you will stick along for the ride. The baby is taking a nap, and summer is on the way, which means I'll be able to bust out videos like before, and I'll have my other child home more, which would be great. Let's begin. Six is part of this story. My generation inherited a world where sex was cheap but not free. We inherited a culture of boring, violent, coercive heterosexuality. <laughs> what I think is a little bit weird when she says coercive heterosexuality. Coercive homosexuality is rampant in prisons. And heterosexuality is not boring. It's not boring. Just because it's not being done in a club bathroom doesn't mean that it's somehow not boring. Like, that it's boring. We grew up being warned that sex was something dangerous. Well, it is. STDs, regret. I mean, it's a very spiritual thing that can harm you spiritually or physically and health-wise. Something violent that boys did to girls. It's only violent if the person doesn't want it. Right. Something that men needed and women controlled. I mean, men do need it. Women do need it. And both men and women control it. Because it takes two to tango, as they say. A woman, like Vivian Fox, she's obsessed with 50 Cent. They only dated for... Four months, 14 years later, she's still talking about him. And no matter how much she says she's obsessed with him, he won't sleep with her again. So, a woman can say, sleep with me, sleep with me, but it doesn't mean the man's going to do it. He has to not be flaccid, and she has to actually open up. So, I mean, it goes to both. But I understand what she's getting at. Sounds like she's talking a little bit about red pill there. Something that strong men wanted and nice girls didn't let them have too easily. I mean, she's upset with that? Think about her tone here. Yes, strong men do want that because they have a sexy... Uh, a sexy... I mean, they have a, a healthy sex drive, right? They want to get it out in the best ways they can. They don't want to have to use their hand, you know? I mean, come on. And nice girls don't give it up too easily. Do you see how she's trying to make it sound like... To give it up easily is uh, actually being nice. You're not helping men by giving it up easily. They don't. Then they don't actually have to provide for you and step up. They have to be motivated and driven and have a goal. We grew up marinated in a food in a flood of mainstream pornography that refaced sex as a factory line of bodies. I mean, that's interesting. A factory line, a pornography type production, yeah, but you're the one who's advocating the destruction of the nuclear family. So you're part of that problem. Battering each other into submission of ritual violence being done to women and girls. Of hammering, nailing, smashing, wrecking, choking, slapping, destroying a language of sex that was straight-laced, joyless, and competitive at every else in our lives. This is a, This is a good point here. So, submission. I talked about how the word submission is really being used as sex. And the even this cult Christian on Twitter called the transformed wife. Now she's saying, you know, women should submit to their husbands in sex. The red pill community has taken how Muslim women submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And made it... Like the hadith about the angels cursing women if they don't give it to their husbands. They have taken something and twisted it into a pornographic 
cludgeon to beat women over the head to keep them in fear of their men cheating and watching porn. So blind obedience and no will is being turned into a synonym for submission. And that's where the BDSM porn culture comes in. And so what used to be being cooperative is now being used in a different way. That's why I might stop using the word submit to your husband. You submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because you're a slave who has no free will in that regard in a way. I mean, you have a free will, but you hear and you obey. That's the goal when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm not going to blindly obey any man. You, not every man is like a prophet. You have to watch out. Some people can lead you astray right off a cliff. You have to have common sense, right? So this language she says here of hammering, nailing, smashing, wrecking, choking, the very violent uh, rhetoric that is being used in titles of videos, the women, the porn stars who are sexually liberated, they're the ones who agree to that and love getting paid for it and are using their bodies in this liberal way as she said so the porn stores give it away easily through a price so when she's saying nice girls don't let them have it too easily well the bad women gave it up real easily and they put a price tag on it so how can you complain about how violent porn gets when she hates religion she hates christian straight men so think about it this way if you don't fear fornication and adultery, which is what the Christians demand, that you fear that you don't do it, same for us Muslims, right? You're going to get spiraling vortexes of decay, of the slippery slope of more strange and more strange videos, as so many young men will attest to. So it, then they become bored with just average women. They want to see something weirder and weirder. So she's complaining about the problems of violence and porn, yet mocks religion. It's She just can't see the writing on the wall. Modern society conflates sex and power, creating an environment where the idea of freedom is fetishized in theory and flattened in practice, where every desire must become the desire to dominate. Where power, violence, and authority are eroticized, sex itself becomes authoritarian. That's an interesting point. So, sex is in itself erotic, right? So when you talk about freedom and you talk about submission, I think submission is being fetishized. She says freedom is being fetishized. When you talk about freedom of sex... Which is what the sexual revolution sought. You're going to get different people using sex in a different way instead of a reward for marriage and child rearing. Now it can be commodified, and the women themselves are doing that. No one forces some of these girls to do only vans and such, they chose it. And they have a lot of purchasing power economically but not a lot of social power for a while when it comes to actual marriage and children they have social power in terms of getting the most attention in that arena but that attention turns into dollars but it's gonna have a finite supply once they start aging unless they turn themselves into a fetish like a granny or whatever so the authoritarian aspect i think has always kind of been there because when you're an authoritarian, then the word submit becomes different. Authoritarian tendencies are baked into mainstream political culture. A more specific term for this tendencies are what some people call neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is, quite simply, a way of organizing society. From politics to culture and commerce. So that the needs of the market of private gain take precedence over everything else. It describes a specific form of global capitalism where nothing is more important than that can what can be sold 
and to whom, and for how much. For human life itself has no inherent value, where every human urge is channeled towards greater productivity, and most of us spend most of our time working ourselves to the raw nerve for someone else's profit. Now, this is the thing. Someone else's profit, that's, that's true. Yeah. But that's where some traditional gender roles can come in. I can run myself ragged for my children and because it is part of what must be done for myself. And then if you're running yourself ragged to make sure you do the duties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to, you're doing it for Allah. But being a stay-at-home mom is not a easy road, so if you're going to go into the job market, you best do it well. You don't want to be a mediocre worker. You want to do your best. You can give and do your best. It doesn't mean you let them drain you, but you do your best. More than anything else, neoliberalism is allergic to the idea of human beings living, organizing, and caring for one another collectively. Ah, yes, he's a communist. I keep forgetting. We already have a collective, but the children are not part of the collective. Okay, China is a collective. They're authoritarian. You're always going to have some type of hierarchy. Okay, I'm not a neoliberal. But to say that they don't see value in life, it's... I don't know, I don't really fall for that. And greater productivity is great in certain areas. Agricultural stuff, it really hurts the small farmers. And monocropping isn't healthy. But technology has a balance. You have to wield it respectively. You know, it's such a dynamic tool with such a testy utility. Instead, it imagines a world order where individuals and their families struggle alone in a world of ruthless competition where only the strongest and luckiest survive. That sounds very Darwinian. Okay, it's kind of Darwinian. Uh, social Darwinism sounds like she's talking about. I mean... You have to be strong to survive, but mercy is a strength. And kindness is a strength. If you want to help some people, you got to help them, but some people are incredibly lazy. My grandma's brother is a raging alcoholic. He still asks his 90-year-old mother, like 90-something-year-old mother, for money. He lives in a hotel. He's got like 60 UIs. He's not allowed to have a license. And he's a complete bum. He don't want to help himself. And he's a dirty pervert. Huge pervert. And the family's exiled him, and he's just a sicko. People like him have made their own bed and want to sit there and moan. Now, my grandpa was somebody who would work his hands to calluses. He was a hard worker. He had to be strong emotionally physically, spiritually, you don't see certain animals just sitting around complaining. They just have to be. When a wildebeest migration is occurring and they all have to cross a river and there's these crocodiles just snatching them up as they go, they fight till the end and whoever was the fastest to get across, the smartest or didn't make one wrong step, escapes being someone's dinner. But, at the same time, the best crocodile is going to get his meal, isn't he? Because he has to be the strongest and he has to really be strategic. There's a balance. Especially even if you look at birds. You'll see a hawk or, no, or a turkey vulture. They're doing their thing. The little mouse, the little wild rat. they got to escape that, don't they? So it's, it's just a balance. It's just the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this planet. You can still practice kindness, empathy, and help. But sometimes I really do feel the world is a dog-eat-dog -dog situation. And you have to keep going no matter what. But if you want to give up, accept the, the, the whale's bite. This is why neoliberalism eventually becomes authoritarianism. And neoliberalism, like every form of authoritarianism, is not just about controlling what people do, it is about controlling how they think and feel, but eventually something is bound to snap. So she's really taken a dig 
at neoliberalism, which is fine with by me. But she kind of mixed in some other phrases there, which is her right. But I don't agree with the social Darwinist because it sounds a little bit like Hobbesian in a way. Life is nasty, brutish, and short. But I do tend to agree with a little bit of the cynics there that life on Earth is brutal. But it's up to you to look at the puzzle and the maze that is this realm and figure out how you're going to survive without being unethical. Turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him for opportunities to do good deeds. And to be strong is to fight against evil because evil itself is strong. So you must also be strong. I'm not into the whole give me the cheek so I can just put my boot on your neck. I'm not into that. Unless someone tells you to lay down your life for your children. You know. You can't coddle people too much. Because even a bald eagle turns the nest twigs inward to kind of prod the baby to be the chick to be uncomfortable so they eventually want to be able to fly. If, if a baby deer is too comfortable on the ground, doesn't get stand up and start walking right away, wolf's going to snatch them up. They got to learn to run real fast. Same with horses and gazelles, all them running critters. You gotta watch out. Only a panda can ab afford to be a lazy, useless creature. You know, because people pay for them to live. They would already be wiped off of Earth if they had to actually survive. Because they're nice and fat and juicy for tigers. So, this is an interesting thing that she's brought up. Again, though, it's really strange how she doesn't see she's part of the problem. She doesn't like angry, vicious sex, yet she mocked the nuclear family for having taboos on sex. And she just calls the modern state sexist and she's, she's really woke, let's put it that way. But at least she has things I can argue against and talk about. Give her that credit. She, she has her ideas organized and put on paper with and structured very well so that someone like me who is really into textual analysis can really just see exactly where she's going and one compliment I'll give her is she organizes her thought and then brings us to the conclusion so that's really nice deductive reasoning that she has laid out in her texts very interesting what do you think about what she said let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to join my blog, it's www.subscribestar.com slash Mahan Archive. I hope to see you there. I post a lot of interesting content on there that you won't see me post anywhere else. And support the channel so I can save up to move to a different part of California and save up for a farm in Alaska and get diapers. Take care.